Okay, friends, chapter 16 of otherwise known as Sheila the Great. Next week, we are going home. Our summer in Terrytown is practically over. In some ways, I am glad, such as I won't have to listen for the Headless Horseman anymore. But in other ways, I'm sorry. I will really miss Mouse. She's promised to tell Bobby Egrin that I never touched any of his models. But just in case he doesn't believe her and decides to get me, Mouse will say I've gone to Australia and won't be back. I'll visit you in the city, Mouse said, and next summer maybe you'll come back to Terrytown. But next summer we're going to Disneyland, I told her. You're really going, she asked. Well, we're thinking about it, at least I am. Then I'll think about it too, Mouse said, and maybe we can all go together. Now that's a really good idea, I said. Me and Mouse would love to be around when Libby says goodbye to Hank Crane. She is the star of his new movie. It's all about a girl who sees everything upside down. Libby had to learn to stand on her head to get the feel of the part. She says someday Hank will be very famous and we will all be able to say we knew him when. Mouse and I don't believe her. Mom got the idea of having a farewell to Terrytown party. She told us about it after supper tonight. Daddy said, that sounds like fun. Can I invite Mouse, I asked. Of course, Mom said, we'll have the whole Alice family. Then Libby asked, can I invite Hank and Marianne Markman? Mom said, sure, and let's have Marty too. And the Van Arden twins, I said. <clears throat> and maybe Hank can bring a friend for Marianne, Libby said. By that time, Daddy and Mom were laughing and making up a party list. The next few days, we were all busy planning our farewell to Terrytown. Daddy said he would do the cooking on the outside grill, and Mom said we'd set up tables and chairs in the backyard. At the last minute, I remembered about Betsy Ellis and how she gets hives from dogs, but Daddy said she would be all right as long as she didn't get near Jennifer. The day of our party started out cloudy, and Mom was very disappointed. I thought if it rained, we could get up a good game of indoor hide-and-seek, but by noon, the sun came out and Mom cheered up. At two o'clock, our first guest came, Mouse and her family. Betsy was dragging Ooch, but she had a new ribbon tied around him instead of the dirty old string. Right after that, everyone started to arrive at once. The Van Arden twins, Marianne Markman, Hank, and his friend Bucky Parker, who brought a bat, a ball, and a fielder's mitt with him. Marty came last, and for a minute, I didn't recognize him. It was the first time I saw him in clothes instead of a bathing suit. We spent the afternoon eating hamburgers, hot dogs, barbecued chicken, and a bunch of stuff to go with it. Everyone took turns at the grill so Daddy didn't have to cook the whole time. We all agreed that Hank Crane and Bucky Parker were the best cooks. They were the only ones who didn't drop anything into the fire or burn up the rolls. Even Jennifer had fun. All of our guests stopped to say hello and tell her congratulations on her condition. Toward the middle of the afternoon, she curled up in the shade and went to sleep. At six o'clock, Mom brought out the watermelons. Me, Mouse, and the twins took our plates and went off by ourselves. When we finished eating, Mouse said, Now, take three pits and stick them to your foreheads. Then, give each pit a boy's name, and the one that stays on longest is the boy you'll marry. I couldn't think of one boy I might want to marry, so I named my pits Russ Bindell, Sam Sweeney, and Bobby Egrin. After Mouse, Sandra, and Jane named their pits, we all stood up and walked around with them stuck to our foreheads. As they dried, they fell off. Sam Sweeney fell off me first, then Russ Bindell, which left me with Bobby Egrin as the boy I would marry. And that was pretty funny because I don't even want to meet him, let alone marry him. Then Bucky Parker started throwing his baseball around, and pretty soon we divided into teams and started a game. Me, Mouse, Bucky, and Marty against Sandra, Jane, Libby, Marianne, and Hank. As soon as we started, Betsy burst into tears. I want to play too, she cried. Since our team only had four and the other team had five, we got Betsy. When it was her turn to bat, all she did was stand there and laugh. Finally, Marty called her out on strikes. I struck out swinging my first two times up, but the third time around, I hit a fly ball toward first base, which Libby dropped. Before she could pick it up, I was safe at first. And that's when I noticed Jennifer's friend. He was running around in the bushes. He was practically next to me. I remembered the last time he saw me and what had happened, so I stood very still and prayed that he would go away. Why are you staring like that, Libby asked me. Jennifer's friend is back, I said, look. Libby turned around and saw him. She called, time out, and dove into the bushes after the dog. Then a man came into our yard calling, Mumford, Mumford, here, boy. When Jennifer's friend heard that, he ran out of the bushes and barked like crazy. Jennifer must have recognized his bark because she woke up and got so excited she wrapped herself around the tree. Daddy had to unchain her, and when he did, she took off and ran for her friend. 
Mrs. Ellis Howard, Betsy, get into the house. Hurry or you'll get your hives. The man kept saying, I'm terribly sorry. Really, I am. I had no idea you were having a party, and I don't know why he ran off like that. My father introduced himself to the man and said it was all right about his dog. Then the man told Daddy, Daddy his name was Cyrus Beldrick, and his dog was Mumford. Mom gave Mr. Beldrick a big piece of watermelon and told him that Jennifer is going to be a mother and that Mumford is the father. Mr. Beldrick sat down saying, imagine that. While he ate his watermelon, Jennifer and Mumford sniffed each other. Mouse said, well, now the Egrons won't have any trouble naming the puppies. They can make up combinations of Jennifer and Mumford. Like Jenimum, Jane said. Or Mumford, Sandra said. How about Mumphy, Mouse asked. Or Jake, Sandra laughed. That's not a combination of Jennifer or Mumford, Mouse said. Yeah, but it sounds nice, Sandra told her. Which one do you like best, Sheila, Mouse asked. Oh, I think I'll take Jake, I said. Then we laughed some more until I remembered that I was in the backyard with two dogs loose. So I ran for the house calling, I'll get hives, I'll get awful huge giant hives. But when I got inside, I thought about having a puppy named Jake, who would be much nicer and much better dog than Peter Hatcher's. Except, of course, the dogs don't like me, so how can we possibly have one? Even if he is small and soft and his name is Jake, I mean, it's out of the question, but suppose Libby gets her own way. Oh, well, I will have to worry about that when the time comes. And that is the end of Sheila the Great.